Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. This one is going to be one I hope that is of interest to many of you who paint miniatures. And I'm not just talking about cars because I've focused on gas lands in some previous videos. But I'm talking about miniatures for fantasy games. Uh, Star Wars Legion is out now, so some of you may be painting your stormtroopers or your rebel, your rebel fighters. I got into a conversation about a week and a half ago at the gaming store. Star Wars Legion is out, and those of us who bought the core box, you know, we picked it up, we opened it up, and inside are a bunch of stormtroopers and rebel uh, fighters and Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, some vehicles. All of this has to be glued, uh, you know, sort of assembled, although it's really simple. The stormtroopers, you basically just glue the arms on. All these uh, stormtroopers and rebel uh, fighters have to be painted, okay? So I was talking with a guy, uh, I'm, I've picked rebels, he picked stormtroopers, and I told him, I said, you know, this is gonna take a while for me to paint, paint all my rebel troops. And he said, well, it won't take long at all for my stormtroopers. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I'm just going to um, prime them and then uh, give them a wash. And I thought, okay, that's not a bad idea. But you know, there, on the stormtroopers, there's the black of the goggles and there's some black you know, beneath the armor and stuff. And I asked him about that and he said, you know, I'm gonna use a, a dark wash and it should, should work. I don't know if I agree with that. So I decided to put it to the test. And I figured since I'm gonna put that to the test, I'm gonna put some other miniatures to the test. What I'm gonna do in just a minute, you're gonna see, I have five miniatures. One of them is a WizKids Hero Clicks, I think that's right, or if it's not WizKids, it's a Hero Clicks miniature. It's already painted, came from the, you know, came purchased that way. The paint job is not the greatest, especially in the hands and the facial features, but it's pre-painted. It just doesn't look good. All right, the second one was, uh, or the second two are two miniatures that I've had that I've been meaning to paint. One is a snake man, another is an archer. Once the snake man is plastic and the archer is whatever that material is that the, uh, the reaper miniatures, the white ones that are bendy and um, you're supposed to be able to paint them, but I went ahead and primed them. The fourth figure is a stormtrooper. Uh, I'm probably going to take some heat for this from some of you Star Wars Legion players who have spent all this time, you know, working on your stormtroopers. I don't plan on playing the stormtroopers, and no, I do not want to trade rebels for stormtroopers because I never know I might need some of them for scenery or what. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up a stormtrooper. Uh, they come in a dark gray, and I'm going to prime him, and I'm going to test the wash theory. And then the fifth figure is just a plain old skeleton. Uh, it's an, also a Reaper with the bendy white plastic that I'm going to prime. I'm going to paint it up and then I'm going to give it a wash. Now here's the difference. The gentleman I was speaking to was talking about just mixing up some black paint and you know with water and slapping it on. I'm going to do something different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all five of these figures and I am going to mount them with some sticky or tacky onto like a tube or a, you know, maybe a, a bottle of paint. And I'm going to dip them into this quick shade strong tone from army painters it's a can hear that it's a it's a can uh, how many ounces is this uh blah, blah, blah. it probably says on here but i think it's covered up with a sticker i want to say i paid about 20 dollars for this i'll verify it and put it in the in the uh description below but what i'm going to do is i'm going to shake this up real good open the can lid and after these figures are painted except the one that's already painted i'm going to dip them in this pull them out let them dry and i'm going to see what they look like I'm very curious to see how the Stormtrooper looks. Strong tone, just so you know, is more of a black ink, okay? There's a light tone and a, I forget what the other one is. Anyway, there's two other ones, a light tone and another one, and they're more of a brown finish. The ink uh, is brown. The dark tone is definitely a black ink. So I don't know what's gonna happen here. Um, for example, here is the Snake Man, as you can see. He's uh, primed. I started painting his, his uh, sword here, but unpainted, but primed. Here is the little, you know, hero clicks guy that came pre-painted. I don't know if you can see it that well, but his face is, the facial features are not good. The hands are not good. And he's painted all in green. And he's got some nice texture and the boots have wrinkles and there's some leather ties on it. It looks good. So I'm, I, you know, who knows what the, what the wash is going to do to this. But anyway, let's, uh, let me show you the figures starting out and I'll narrate and walk you through the process, and then I'll do this live, or semi-live, you know. I'll do it for you and show you the dipping process, 
and then let's see what they look like, okay? Let's go to the table and I'll show you how I'm gonna get started. Here are the five minis that I am gonna put through the dip test. The first one is uh, an archer from Hero Clicks. The second one is a, an archer from Reaper. The third one is a skeleton from Reaper. The fourth one is a snake man, and I cannot remember where I got this figure. And of course, the fifth one is a stormtrooper from the Star Wars Legion War Game. I took these three and just uh, stuck them to a piece of chipboard uh, so that I could prime them at the same time, took them out to the garage, and hit them with white primer. All right, here we go on the Stormtrooper. Now, I didn't go crazy on the painting here. I did a little bit of black behind the armor. I did the eyes and the dots around the helmet. Again, wasn't going for super, super high detail here. Main thing was to get him white, get some of the black put on, and then dip him and see how this you know, weathers it or how it fills in the details. We'll take a look and see. I'm gonna try to only go to the feet and not get the base wet. I did that on the other one by accident. So let's see. All right. And I read that you need to shake it off a little bit. So I am gonna, I didn't get his feet. So I'm gonna go back in, go a little deeper here. Man, that's hard to see. Okay, there we go. Come on. All right, I'm just gonna get him all. There we go. All right, try to try to get as much off as I can. I wanna. I don't want it pooling on any of the major features. So now I'll let gravity do its job. All right, there's one down. All right, let's test this out. I have mounted the Archer figure. It was pre-painted. This was a Hero Clicks figure. I think it was for Lord of the Rings. I've uh, mounted the base on top of just a paint bottle. And I'm going to open up the uh, Dark Tone here and dip this little guy straight down in there. Let me go ahead and open up the... Uh, I've shaken this pretty good. Uh, and I'm just going to pop the lid off here. Probably should have done this before I started recording. There we go. All right, here we go. I'm just going to turn it upside down, put it in there, pull it out and let it dry. So here it goes. I'll let it drip off a little bit. All right. And I'm just gonna sit it here and let it dry and we'll come back and see how it does. All right, this time around I have a skeleton. Now let me tell you what I did with the skeleton. I only used uh, basic paints. I used uh, desert, what was it? I used desert sand for the bone. I used, uh, which brown did I use? Let me see, I used harvest brown for the staff. And for the blade of the ax, I used blade steel. And then I used uh, mountain stone for the base. I'm not, again, I'm not going for a super detail here. I'm more interested in seeing what the the uh, dark tone does for the skeleton. So I again, I I didn't I I did it fast. Um, the the weapon and the base. I really don't care about the weapon and the base. I'm more interested to see what it does for the 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 uh, bone. And one final thing. This is a Reaper mini. It was a three pack of skeletons. One, two, three. I will tell you right now. I've painted a lot of skeletons. Uh, these are not my favorite. They're they're not very. Uh, I just I'm not not a fan of them. The detail, the facial expression is horrible. Um, the feet are bad. The hands are bad. Uh, it's just not a great one. Now, granted, it's a three pack. You get what you pay for. But I will just tell you that you, the, the detail on these is not as great as some of the other skeletons that I've painted. But let's do the dip method and see how this works out. I'm only going to take it down to the feet. All right. So let's go in. There we go. All right, give them a good shake. Get, get a lot of that excess off. This stuff is sort of thick. I don't know how to describe it. It's definitely inky and uh, it's it's viscous. Um, 
and I don't know that I think that helps it you know gravity it rolls down but uh, good I got all the skeleton covered and the base and the weapon so I'm gonna let that one dry and we'll see how he turns out once it's dry now here is the snake man and I need to tell you that I went really detailed on this one I spent a lot of time painting him uh, the shield the body armor that kind of stuff here is the last one my snake man He's got two different shades, dark purple on the outer skin, lighter purple on the end. You'll notice the shield has some little skulls adorned to it, some feathers. There's two different colors of wood. His uh, necklace was a little tricky, and so was his, his we not his weapon, but the necklace was a little tricky, as was the leather band. Uh, but I, again, I wasn't going for super perfection, and I think the dip will help the necklace. So let's see what this does. As you can see here, I'll put some close-ups of this later on so you can see before and after. But here's the before. All right. It's nice and coated. Let's let gravity do its work and we'll see what it looks like a little bit later. All right, everybody. Uh, I have four of the figures done. The fifth one after priming, I'd never noticed, but it popped off the cardboard after I spray painted it and fell on the ground and it got stomped and crushed a little bit. So he didn't survive. Um, but I have four to show you. So let's start with the Hero Clicks. Verdict. It didn't really improve it, except uh, before I dipped it, the greens of the boots and the quiver were almost an identical color to the outfit. After the dip, the boots and the quiver are definitely a different color. Um, I mean, it, it it sort of enhanced it, I guess, or, or but it, the colors are much more distinguishable now. As for the face, it definitely got in the eyes, so it gives the face a shadow appearance, but it did nothing for the hands. So a pre-painted figure like the Hero Clicks, eh, I'm gonna say not so much. Okay, let's go on to the skeleton. Now, if you'll remember, this one I painted with sand, desert sand was the bone. And I've used this on previous skeletons that I'm very happy with. So I'm gonna go back and tell you that I still don't like this skeleton, but the dip did very well. And again, I'm gonna put close-ups of all these figures at the end of the video so you'll be able to see better than I'm showing here. But the detail of the ribs, the joints, the eye sockets, it it really did a nice job. Uh, I'm, I don't care for the, the uh, design of this skeleton, but desert sand followed by the dip definitely makes it look like this old, uh, this definitely old undead creature that um, it looks good. So I will give it a thumbs up on that. And on, and the, the, the positive side, it also did nice on the uh, steel of the ax head and the wooden uh, handle. So definitely good there. Up next, the Star Wars Stormtrooper. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I did not think that this was going to turn out as well as it did. I am very pleased with it. Uh, does it look like some of the Stormtroopers I've seen, some of the pros at the gaming store paint? Absolutely not. But primed it white, hit a few areas with black, and then dipped it, and I've got this really worn out looking Stormtrooper. Definitely looks like it's from New Hope, A New Hope with the, uh, you know, the beat up armor, the dirty. Um, again, I'll put some close ups so you'll see, but I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. I don't want to spend hours and hours painting each figure. If I were an Imperial player, I would glue the Stormtroopers together, hit them with white prime, primer, uh, paint the uh, the blaster and some of the under armor, you know, beneath the armor and the eyes, and then I would hit them with the wash. You could do the dip or you could just paint this on, but it doesn't matter. It really, really turned out great. Very happy with that. Okay, the last one. This is the one that I spent the most time on. I wanted to know if the dip, now no, let me take a step back. Normally after I paint a miniature, I hit it with a brush with the dark tone or the brown or the light tone, whatever I choose. I dab it on and I, I let gravity pull it down. This time, remember, I was dipping. So I wasn't sure how this was gonna work with a really detailed painted, uh, a finely detailed uh, miniature. 
Um, in the past, like I said, I've painted miniatures and, and dabbed on the, the dark tone, but with the snake, I dipped him. And I have to tell you, it turned out spectacular. The shield, the feathers, the chest strap, um, the weapon, the the uh, the purples of the of the stomach and the back. It just hands down, the dip was the way to go on this. I've done the I've done a handful of these, and I I tell you what, I'll take a picture and show you some of these that I did by hand, and then I'll I'll show you one next to this one that I dipped. I wish I'd have known this. The dip gives the uh, snake a a wet. Uh, there, you know, it hasn't dried completely, but it's definitely got a wet look to it. And um, it's out of the four, I think it's the one that did the best. And uh, I'll put some close-ups so you can make your own decisions. Now, what did I learn about the dip process? <laughs> one, don't base your miniatures. I based all these guys before I dipped them. Don't do that. Connect them temporarily to something that you're going to dip. And when when the when the dip is dry, then base them. And the reason for that is, I don't know if you can see, but the the um, the dip has dried on the base. It is dry. It's a little tacky still, but it's ruined. It, it did something to the base. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it looks like, you know, I, I spilled glue on it. Obviously, I can put some white glue on this and do some dirt or sand or rocks or whatever and, and, and cover that up. But I think if you're going to do the dipping of a miniature completely, uh, don't do it with its final base attached, which is what I thought I was doing here. Maybe you can see down in there with a the snake, you can see how it sort of, you know, stained it. And uh, I don't know how well it'll hold up to a paint job, uh, but I'll certainly try. The worst one was the Hero Clicks. Uh, as you can see, the entire base has not, this has been drying all day, and it's still got a wet look to it. It's still a little tacky. Yeah. It, yeah, tacky, but it's not coming off and it's not leaving my fingerprint in there. So uh, it's probably going to dry a few more hours and it'll be done. But again, this is a base that I'll have to redo. I should have just put some tacky. I guess I could have dipped it with my fingers. Honestly, if you can find a way for the miniature to stand up, dip it with your fingers and prop it up and let gravity do its thing. But that's one of the things I learned about it. Don't dip it on, on its final uh, base. So anyway, four figures, one was pre-painted, one hand-painted with detail, one primed with a little bit of black paint added to it, and then the other was painted with just base colors, nothing fancy, and dipped. And believe it or not, the three that I really was you know, a little nervous about did pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. The Hero Clicks, I didn't have high hopes for it. Eh, I didn't, I, you know, if anything, it did bring out the green and the greens and the browns. Uh, and if I wanted to do some more detailing on this, I could probably do it now. Uh, but the, the wash just did not, uh, didn't really do anything for the hero clicks. Oh well, live and learn. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. I might do something like this in the future with different tones or different shades. It's definitely given me the idea that uh, I've got a bunch of miniatures that I'm going to be painting. And obviously I'll do, always do a test first, but I think I'm going to start dipping them. One thing, oh yeah, one thing I didn't show you was... I was reading the instructions here, and it said that after you dip, to give it a good, you know, fling a few times. So on the snake and the stormtrooper, did I do it on the skeleton? I think I did. Yeah, I did. On on these three, I took them out to the garage and gave them a good, you know, flip so, so some excess came off. And I think that really did help. The stormtrooper was dark. Uh, it was looking like it was pooling, puddling in different places, and I just didn't know. But after a few flicks, good flicks, what was left really got down into the crevices and cracks and stuff and left me with this great looking stormtrooper that I would be perfectly happy playing Star Wars Legion on a table with a whole bunch of these with nothing more than primed white primer, black paint on the blaster and, and under armor and a dip and done. Pretty cool. All right. Well, listen, um, again, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope maybe, um, you know, if you decide to use the quick shade, they have the strong tone. I know they have it in others, but I bought the strong tone and I may buy a can of the others. I'm not sure yet. 
put a link to this in the uh, description below. It'll probably be, probably be an Amazon affiliate link. So if you end up buying a can, I'll get like 10 cents or something like that. Thank you in advance if you do it. But if not, don't worry about it. Hope you like it. Uh, I've got some really interesting projects coming up in the near future. Uh, some more fantasy related, D&D related. So I know some of you are like, does this guy do any D&D stuff anymore? Yes, I do. One of them's a pretty big project. The This one right here, the one with the crystal that I did with Wylock, that one took a lot of time. So I kind of took a step back and um, did some of my other things that were, were behind schedule. And now I'm sort of caught up. So I've got some more uh, fantasy and D&D related uh, terrain coming up soon that I think you're going to like. Uh, I've got another Gaslands car coming up for those of you who are into Gaslands. I'm still working on cars. What else am I working on? Let's see. I'm still painting the GKR Giant Killer Robots. I'm doing the second robot team, uh, the blue team. And anything else? That's it for right now. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, this is DM Jim, and I'll see you in the next episode.